Oh, the light. I hate the light. So, you might notice, I'm wearing the same Weeping Angel shirt as last time. And that's because it's family weekend here at SIU, so I'm filming Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays video all together. Um, and the reason to do that was because I wanted to make Friday's video about Childhood Wonder because I've been waiting to do that one. And I knew that I needed to make Saturdays and Sundays in advance, and I'm like, I did, but I just don't want to turn out three videos and force it. I'll do four. Uh, and the logic behind that is that uh, for the next three days I will be discussing trilogies and different aspects of trilogies. Uh, and for the next three days, I mean like the next half hour, because I'm going to be talking and then I won't have to do VEDS for like a couple days. It's a little VEDS vacation. Yeah. Except I still put up quality videos and not me yelling at a tree. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about why we like trilogies. Um, and it's probably going to be an obvious answer, but let's talk about it. So, we like trilogies. We fit things into nice trilogies. This is dying a bit with franchise movies, but we still fit, like to still fit things in trilogies. Like, there are more than three Star Wars movies, but we split it into trilogies. We've got the trilogy of the originals, the prequels, and now the new movies. Um, and we'll see how we label the, the Star Wars stories in there, the anthology ones. But we do this with the Marvel Universe. There is the Iron Man trilogy. There is the Captain America trilogy. Even though the Iron Man trilogy a little, but the Captain America trilogy really doesn't work like a trilogy. But it's three movies all under the same name. So let's call it a trilogy. We like trilogies. Even if we aren't making them, we like to label them as such. So, why do we like trilogies so much? Well, of course, we have just gotten used to the three-story format. We've gotten used to having a first, second, and third movie. We've seen this with Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Matrix, Pirates of the Caribbean. And we've trained our brains to see things, to see film franchises like that. This is slowly changing, as previously mentioned, with the MCU and with uh, the X-Men movies and with Star Wars. The trilogy is expanding. Uh, we're probably going to see this with Indiana Jones. If Indiana Jones 5 does well, they're going to keep making Indiana Jones movies. And there will still be the original trilogy, but the franchise will live past that. We already see that with... You know, um, uh, what was I going to say? We see that with Pirates of the Caribbean, having a fourth movie tacked on. We see that with Back to the Future, having unofficial entries like the Telltale games that fans still consider part of the franchise. But then we have our core trilogy, which is kind of the foundation. So first off, we just kind of, I feel like we just kind of trained ourselves to see trilogies and to accept that as the format. However, there's a really good reason to make a trilogy, and I'm not sure if this is always what we use for those trilogies, but it's what works really, really well, and that's the three-act structure. And the best example of this is in Star Wars. So Star Wars A New Hope. This is a movie, and it fits into the three-act structure. So you have uh, status quo, breaking status quo, call to action, all that good stuff. So it's a complete movie of its own, but it still leaves plot threads open so that they can continue the story. And we see while each of the Star Wars movies has their own three-act structure, it is a complete movie in and of themselves, so you can watch and you can get the satisfaction of a three-act structure, we still see an overarching three-act structure. That doesn't apply to the stories of the five films, but of the story of or the story of the films, but the story of the saga as a whole. So we see our setup. Uh, that's a new hope. We get to know our characters. We get to know our villains. We get to know what the deal is. Why do the rebels want to fight the Empire? And what is the Empire's deal? How do they handle stuff? What is the Force? Uh, what is this world we're living in? Um, so we get to set things up from a pretty ground level. So when we're going into the second movie, we start to change that. We start to add 
a higher sense of conflict. How George Lucas does this is making the movies the movie a bit darker. He gives the villains a leg up. The confrontation goes up. Han, I guess, spoilers alert, but everyone's seen Star Wars, so go watch Star Wars. Han gets frozen. Luke gets his hand chopped off. They get chased out of Cloud City. The Empire has a leg up on them. There is a conflict here. And then we have our third movie, which is the climax. This is where we get the big fight. This is where we get the Battle of Endor and plus the armada of rebel ships clashing with the fleet of Empire ships. And we get to see a little bit of bookends with another trench run, but this one being escalated. This time it's not just a bunch of X-Wings making a military venture. This time it's the Millennium Falcon barreling through the trenches. So we get to see a climax and then a resolution. Darth Vader turns to the light side. The Empire gets destroyed. And then story is over. Uh, so that is the reason why trilogies naturally could work. We also see this, interestingly enough, in the Indiana Jones trilogy, which doesn't have an overarching story, but has the emotions of this. But this isn't really how trilogies are done. Starting with Back to the Future, the kind of way trilogies are done is the first movie comes out, and then maybe there's a tease for the second movie, but then the second and third movie are made in one packaging. Uh, so they have a much more interconnected story than the first one. Back to the Future made sure that they still incorporated the first one, so it feels more like a whole, but then you have Pirates of the Caribbean and you have The Matrix, which don't do this as well. And so it almost feels like the first movie is a standalone, then you have the second and third, which have an overarching story. We have moved past this now to where People just assume sequels. You get sequels no matter what. Sequels are announced before we get the box office. For the longest time, they were still saying they were going to make a sequel to Fan 4 Stick, despite everyone hating that movie. Sequels are a symbol of confidence, and they are something that is expected. The trilogy has lost its grasp in modern day pop culture. And so join me tomorrow when I'm going to be talking about how we should use trilogies now. Or at least how I think we should do them. I don't know anything. I'm just a pretentious film student.